Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm on the line with Milo Lines and Milo Lines over there on that screen in Arizona, and I'm here in California for this video that we're doing, talking about how to really get better at golf. So I'm gonna get a little closer as we're, as we're starting here. So Milo, I did a couple uh, experiments and then also learned some things through doing the, the recent Be Better Golf Schools. So we're gonna talk about what it actually takes to improve at golf. One thing that I did earlier this year was I tried, I did this thing where for about three months I was practicing like a pro. And we're gonna talk about kind of the, the things that I learned during that. And then the things that I learned when we, Milo and I did a series of two different golf schools. So, but before we talk about that, uh, we're gonna talk about this next thing, uh, kind of the reason for this video is we're gonna talk about, we have, uh, Milo and I have a new golf school coming up on October 18th and 19th. It's a Monday and a Tuesday at the Grand Golf Club in San Diego, which is an amazing golf course in San Diego near Torrey Pines. So I'm excited. I've never been to the Grand yeah. before, so it's gonna be fun. It's a great uh, practice facility. And uh, even the short game area actually is really cool because it's designed by Phil Mickelson, uh, both, both the chipping and putting greens and a, a really neat opportunity. We get our own little gazebo area and everything. So Milo, tell us a little bit about what you learned during our golf schools in Williamsburg and then uh, what you hope to accomplish on the 18th and 19th of October at the Grant. Well, I learned quite a bit at the, the schools in Williamsburg. The, one of the best things we learned is that some of the most successful exercises we did were, were we were forced to do by the rain. So we weren't able to be out hitting balls. We were doing more just movement and learning how to move better. And I think the, the biggest mistake people make is that they fall in love with ball flight. So they're not actually changing patterns. They're just getting better at timing what they do, um, which can make you better at golf to a certain extent. And they also go way too fast. I see a lot of players are immediately going, you know, pretty close to full speed, just ripping shots and then trying to gain control of the ball, which is, is definitely beneficial in some ways, but it also can be counterproductive if you're trying to make changes to how you're moving. So for the golf school that we're going to do in San Diego, what did we learn from that? Because we had one day that was like a 90% rain out day. So for about 90% of the day, it was just pouring rain, but we had a gazebo there that we could, uh, or a pavilion, that, that we could do some training. And people saw videos from that. That was when we were doing this motion and we were doing, um, you know, we had the chairs on our butt. Uh -huh. So we kind of made a little bit of a yeah. protocol with it. But so how can we get people in a short amount of time to at least start making solid headway towards like changing a motor program that is really baked in? Well, we can walk through it slow so that they can actually feel it because a lot of the, a lot of the Be Better golfers had a hard time even doing it in slow motion with no balls in front of them where we were walking them through it. So okay. by being able to do it slow and have us walk them through the actual motion they're trying to do, because yeah. a lot of people really don't have any idea of what they're really trying to do. Right. So right. once they understand what they're really trying to do movement-wise, it becomes a little bit easier. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that, and I think this might work. If I'm if I'm here and I put this this ball on my shoulder here, right? Most people, what we discovered, I mean, I kind of knew this, but I didn't really know how A and B it was, how like binary it was, as far as like good golfers, bad good bad golfers. But almost everybody at the school, when they make a backswing, uh, the so this this ball here is kind of on my trail shoulder. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. I had to get a little closer so I can see it. But yeah, yeah you can, I see it. Yeah. So almost everybody is moving the ball like this in their backswing and then this in their downswing mm -hmm. like that. So it's like about a circle like that. And then yeah, you, uh, you in, in your, right. And we it's had like an under move. over. The, the right, front so word under stroke. and over. Yeah, so then, yeah, we described that in the school as like, yeah, what is that called? A uh, freestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you in your swing. And a lot of elite ball strikers, of which I'll put you in that category for sure. Is going this way, this way. So it's like the circle is going in the complete opposite direction, which is hard to understand, because as I'm coming in my downswing. The. The 
shoulders like getting further from the ball as I'm thinking I need to start making progress towards the ball, you know? So Mm -hmm. what, for you, what do you think is the most effective way to start people on changing that pattern from this forward stroke to this backstroke as we're hitting it? Well, doing just what you're doing there was pretty darn effective. We, we actually took people and had them do some kind of swim motions like this and got them feeling it and then added in some rotational motions. But most people have no idea that they're actually trying to bend their spine a little bit in the backswing to the left mm-hmm. and then that it should bend slightly to the right in the in or at least for right handers in the transition. They're they're kind of stiff backed and going like this. OK, yeah. Where good players have a lot more mobility and they they move freer in their spine. So that that's how you get the, the path you're looking for. It's not so much that you're drop, dropping your arms, your arms come down, but it's mostly because of how your your spine is working. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that now, because then the other thing we were, t- we were talking about there was like, so if this thing is here like this. And that's on my butt. When you're talking about moving your spine so much, everybody, I always hear so much about keep a steady spine angle, but actually is it, it's not really steady though, is it? It's actually dynamically moving. For me to stay connected to this pad here, Mm -hmm. I've got to move a lot. Like this is, and so what we want to get away from is this, right? We know that we don't like this. We want to stay on it, but we don't stay on it by trying to freeze our spine angle, huh? Definitely not. No, the, the spine is constantly moving, bending and turning and extending and flexing. It's doing a lot of different things throughout the golf swing. Mm-hmm. But understanding how that happens is really important and what drives things is really important. And okay. That's a, so it's a complicated thing, but it's, it's not that hard to teach somebody once as we, we experienced, we, we actually made some really good headway people moving a lot better. Yeah. So what club do you have there? Is that a? It's a six iron. It's the only one iron. I have in the backyard. All right. So hit, hit this, this club, that six iron, like, you, like it would go 100 yards. 100 yards? Mm-hmm. You want me to make a full, like a full motion, but slow? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is really, really, that's like ninja level stuff to be able to do that. You said really what's powering it. So talk about when you hit that shot there, what feels like is the thing that's powering the club, like giving the club motion? Well, I feel like the, the motion, the club is getting motion from what my body's doing. So my, my arms are getting motion from my, it's like a chain reaction, hard to describe exactly. Sorry, my dog's barking right behind me and driving me nuts. So it's, a, it's like a chain reaction. And I feel like everything is powered by the left side of my body kind of clearing out and around. The left side of your body clearing out and around. So a good, what would be a good way for people who, are, who, who know that they're going this way and know that they're kind of like top down, like, you know, they can see in video that they're giving the power kind of from the top down, not the mm-hmm. bottom up. What is a good way to kind of reprogram getting the power more torqued the correct way well different varieties of step drills are really good i like to add them in after they understand what the actual pattern they're trying to build is so what i have people feel like they're doing is that the club is staying out and away from them Mm -hmm. as the as the body's kind of pivoting around down and around all the way and driving the club all the way to the ball so I feel like I'm never even, I'm not using my hands to hit. Yeah. My hands are creating the structure. Okay. And my body's powering around. All right. So I've got my hands creating the structure. Width is like super important. I think that's the width, especially with the right arm, I think is the thing that I keep coming back to as being like one of the absolute keys of the golf swing. But um, so if they have this width, they can feel like, so this is my left side here, Myla. Mm-hmm. So feel like take it back, and this left side then goes down and, and around, mm-hmm. and that moves the golf. That moves the whole arm club unit around perfectly. Why down? Why does it have to go down before it goes around? 
Well, it has to do both. It's going down and around at the same time. But it uh-huh. has to go. It has to go down because if if my desire is to arrive at impact where I've retained some angles, yeah, the, radi- the radius is shortened. So if if I've retained angles and I move back, I can't reach the ground anymore unless I let those angles out. So there has to be an element of down. Otherwise, you'll okay. never you'll never arrive at impact with some retained angles. Okay, and then how does that relate? Because almost everybody who gets taller also kind of pumps the goat, so to speak, right? This mm-hmm. way. So how does then going down? Should you when you go down, should your butt kind of go back too? Yeah, some amount. Yep, for sure. Okay. So the down is a combination of adding hip flexion and spine front bending. So it's. You know, you can see my butt's definitely going back. And knee flex. What do you think of, like, when it comes to golfers who've been golfing a really long time and they're trying to get better and they're trying to, like, okay, I finally now have some time to put into my game and I'm going to, like, commit in this next year or whatever it is to to getting better. What do you think holds long-time golfers back from making actual strides towards getting better? I'd say first thing is they have to make an honest assessment of, where they're at in their game and what they're willing to do as far as making changes. And even if the changes are possible, because for some people, some of the motor patterns are really not that possible. So they should probably focus on something else. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, you have to make a really honest assessment of what you need to work on. And then you have to be willing to slow down and put in the time. So if you under, if you know what you need to work on and you know what you're trying to accomplish, then you've got to be willing to slow it down and build it. Give me an example, because this is something that that other teachers have talked to me about as far as like knowing what you're working on. Are you talking about like, should you know the ball flight you're looking for? Or should you know like in your body, like the positions you're looking for? Or the like, what what do you think? It, what do you think comes first? I think movement first. I always I like to teach movement first. So let's say you're a, a player whose tendency is to play golf like this which okay. that's pretty common, right? And okay, so define that for us. So, so that's that's like come up and out of your posture and, and fling your arms at it, right? Fling your arms yeah. and stand up. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's not so much you're flinging your arms, you're flinging your, your wrists at it. So you're throwing the club like this and standing up. Yeah, you're, uncoupl- you, you're uncoupling, yeah. Yeah, if that's you, then what do we have to do? Well, basically everything the opposite. So you're going to, instead of feeling like your wrists are flinging, you're going to feel like they're not. And you're going to feel like, instead of feeling like you're going this way, you're going to feel like you're sitting down and unwinding. So oh, it's going to okay. be a, a lot of, a lot of stuff's going to be backwards. And it's yeah. not going to come natural. You're not going to solve it at full speed. You're mm-hmm. going to have to solve it gradually, slowly, feeling different patterns like that. And one thing, I don't think we talked in a video about it before, but I think a really powerful and underutilized tool in this phase of your swing when you're trying to make this kind of change is the, um, like the wiffle ball. Like, you know, like a, like a ball like this, mm-hmm. where, where it's a little bit, in, so you're, you're not, it's not an air swing, which can be um, sometimes I, I a, waste, think, a waste of time. Yeah, yeah air, air swings are generally worthless. They're, you know, you're not hitting anything, so you're not training yourself to hit something. That when you are in this kind of transition phase of like, of like, wow, this really feels weird. I wouldn't even be able to hit a ball like this. But you can see at least that you're moving your body better. I think before you even hit a ball, just getting something in the way of like a wiffle ball, especially the two, because the wiffle ball kind of takes away the uh, the result factor. And then it, maybe even hitting it into a net might be might be pretty powerful at that time too, huh? Yeah, I was just talking to a couple guys about. Why more really good players don't come out of places like Arizona, where we have year-round golf? And I would say that we don't really give ourselves an off-season to break things down, slow things down, and hit things into a net. We're always able to watch the ball fly. We're always outside. So it's too tempting to always just go whack golf ball or go play. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense. Like, in baseball, like, all the best players come out of, like, obvious places, like the Dominican Republic with the great weather or, like, Southern California or um, uh, Arizona, Texas, places like that. But in golf, like, 
so many great players come out of Norway and Sweden where they're just like into a net like all the time. Or even uh -huh. like Japan where nobody can afford to play golf other than very few people and they're just hitting at ranges. Yeah, I think an off season can be really good. So that's the time that you can actually make the needed changes if you want to upgrade your game. Give mm. yourself a little off season, go make some upgrades where you can't watch the ball. You just watch yourself move and make the movement better and then figure out how to make that better movement, make the ball do what you want. Okay, so I've got two more questions for Milo. Before we go on, I want to tell you guys, go to bebettergolf.net slash school and check out our next big event, live, in-person, IRL event at the Grand Golf Club in San Diego on, August, on October 18th and 19th with Milo Lines. We're going to be going for two days, two long days. It's, it's just two days. Our, our last school, one was two days, one was three days. This is going to be pretty... Uh, full days on the range and around the uh, practice facility of the Grand Golf Club, which is one of the top practice facilities in Southern, Southern California. Really great location that Sean Cox is setting us up with. And uh, really, there, there are things that we saw in the, in the last school that are um, either difficult to make YouTube videos about and, and even to make um, membership videos about that are much better presented in person. Thanks again, Milo, for joining us. We'll see you in San Diego. Looking forward to it.